Paddle TV is brought to you by Current Designs, the world's leading builder of premium kayaks. Visit us online at cdkayak.com. Welcome back to Facing Waves. Because of its natural beauty and geological significance, Newfoundland's Grossmoor National Park holds the prestigious distinction as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. To learn more about what makes Grossmoor so unique, we make the trip up Trout River Pond. Well, some rain rolled in this morning and blew us off the water, but it seems to have passed and the winds lay down, so we're back on the water. This time I'm with Karen English with Lincoln Tours, and we're on Trout River Pond to explore one of the marquee spots of Grossmoor National Park. We've got the tablelands on our left and the beautiful cliff faces, green cliff faces on our right. This is gonna be a treat. Trout River Pond is incredibly easy to access. You access it from the town of Trout River. There's actually two parts to the pond. There's a small pond and the large pond, which is basically just one big pond with a narrowing. Paddling into Trout River Pond, the, the thing that really uh, jumps out at you is the fact that you have a, a rusty, uh, brownish uh, rock characterized uh, by the, the tablelands itself. Uh, and on the, the other side of Trout River Pond, we have a darker rock which is completely covered in vegetation. So there's, a, there's a, an outstanding um, contrast of, of colors there. So the Tablelands in Grossmoor National Park is one of the unique geological features. One of four places in the world where you'll find upper mantle rock, which is peridotite. Its formation has happened because of the uh, tectonic plates uh, colliding. And normally when plates collide, you have subduction. But what's happened here to form the Tablelands in Grossmoor National Park is you have a piece of the Earth's crust and the mantle that's rose up and is now sitting up on the Earth's surface and it's composed of heavy metals and due to that you have this dramatic landscape of this orange, ochre, brown, rusty, depending on what the weather is like out there, depends on what colors kind of come through. Um, NASA and the Canada Space Agency come here in Grossmoor National Park to do some of the research because it's one of the closest uh, places for them to compare with Mars. Now on the other side of Trout River Pond you have what's the opposite to Mars, you basically have Jurassic Park. You got these big, beautiful cliffs, very lush of vegetation. It, these cool rock formations and water, little waterfalls and after the rain. It's a, it's a beautiful contrast from one side to the other. So it's almost like you turn one way and you're in one planet, you turn the other way and you're in a completely other world. So let's take a minute and look at the gear that I used on this trip to Newfoundland and that I think you should consider for your next paddling trip. Starting from the top, I was using Current Design's Scirocco kayak, which is just a roto-molded version of their Gulfstream composite kayak. Now, the Scirocco was a perfect kayak for the rough conditions that I saw around Newfoundland. It's a fast kayak, accelerates quickly, but what I really like is the fact that it's so maneuverable as well. It has enough rocker so that you can turn the boat quickly when you need to. Now when the weather's warm and the skies are clear, you can pretty much get away with any paddling gear. But when the conditions are like what we had in Newfoundland, you need to have top quality gear. And that's why I was using Level 6's paddling gear. Now Level 6 has paddling gear for pretty much any condition. What I was using primarily on this trip was their Orion dry suit and the new Superior 2.0 paddling top. Both great products for dealing with cold conditions and very comfortable. Now your paddle is your connection to the water and so it's important that you have a good one especially if you're going to be spending a long day on the water in rough conditions. That's why I was using two of my favorite paddles, Aquabound Surge Carbon and Aquabound's Manta Ray Carbon Paddle. Now both of these paddles are lightweight, they feel great in your hands, they take a licking and they do an incredible job of transferring your power into propulsion. Last but not least, when you're dealing with rough terrain and a rough coastline, having a good pair of water shoes is absolutely essential. And that's why I was using, as always, Body Gloves 3T Barefoot Shoes. They're comfortable, they're durable, and they provide incredible foot dexterity. Of course, there's lots of gear options out there, but that's the gear that I use and that I think you should consider for your next trip.